questions. That you take a lot of pride in working here. It's a great place to work, and you mm -hmm. really want to contribute. And what's it been like personally to see your shop just blow up to get to get so so big as far as production and contributions to the community? I mean, it's pretty amazing. And just the fact that you know we're making over half a million barrels a year now, and then our product, and you could go anywhere and see a fat tire logo in town, or basically all over Colorado, and. You know, I, I feel very proud of being able to contribute to that. And, you know, not, it goes beyond beer. Uh, we have uh, promoted a lot with bike culture and, uh, you know, giving back to the community. You know, like every barrel of beer we sell, a dollar goes to, you know, a local community organization. So stuff like that, um, you know, it makes you feel proud and, like, that you're actually contributing something out there. Not only giving people beer, but, you know, uh, Giving something positive back to the community. What a! Uh, how, how many beers do you say you brew right now? I mean, oh, I know man. you don't brew them all at the same time. But um, off the top of my head, just, uh, I would say them. fifteen to twenty. Can, can, you, can you try to name it? I mean, we have Fat Tire, fifteen fifty four, Sunshine Wheat, uh, Triple, Abbey, um, Tubelo, Skinny Dip, uh, Mighty Arrow. Uh, yeah, it goes on and on. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there are so many out there that we've done just one-offs that, you know. You now, was it that way when you got here? I mean, are you, are you brewing not only more beer, but more kinds of beer now than you were? No, it seems like our portfolio is definitely growing and changing because I think beer drinkers out there are changing and they always want something new and exciting. They're looking for, you know, the next, you know, big beer. And it's, it's kind of interesting to switch it up like that because, uh, you know, I like to drink different beers all the time, and I think, you know, variety is better. So um, it's definitely fun um, drinking the beers. Um, from a brewer's and production standpoint, it's kind of nice to make the same beer all the time because, you know, the more you make the beer, the better you get at it and the more consistent it will be. So, you know, it, having these varieties of beer, it adds some excitement and diversity. So uh, I think it's for the best. Are you prouder of the fact you can get fat tire like almost anywhere now, or are you prouder of the fact you guys do some really special kind of one-off beers as, uh, as a brewer? Um, I'm proud of the fat tire. You know, it's uh, we make a lot of it. It's our number one selling beer, and uh, actually, it's my favorite beer. I think that we make um, just because it's so versatile. I mean, you can drink it. You know, you're mowing the lawn, have a fat tire. You could be out. You know, at a nice dinner. You know, in town and have a fat tire with your dinner. So it's really versatile and easy drinking. And yeah, it's a, just a great all around beer. What, what, what do you think, New Bell? If you, if you look back, if we're, let me say we're 20 years in the future, we're looking back at this era in you know, craft brewing going you know, big time. Right. What do you think New Belgium's contribution will have been? When people say, you know, New Belgium really, did, did you guys popularize craft beer in a way? Did you sort of take it to, a, to the next level? What do you think is gonna be kind of the legacy of, of New Belgium and all this? I don't know. I think uh, I think maybe uh, 20 years from now, looking back at craft brewing, like you can maybe look at uh, you know regions geographically throughout the country, and there's certain breweries that come to mind that kind of have popularized popularized craft brewing. You know, like throughout the area, like uh, New Belgium, definitely the Rocky Mountain area, and through the Midwest, um, Sierra Nevada on the West Coast. Um, East Coast, I think of like Harpoon and Magic Hat. So you have uh, kind of these breweries that have been established, you know, going now for like 15, 20 years, and then, you know, put tack on another 20 years of that. So 40 years from now, these places have been in business. And, you know, they're, to me, kind of like, you know, they set the establishment in, in craft brewing. And you think kind of Fat Tire or New Belgium did that here in the Rockies? Sure, yeah. I mean, and uh, you kind of, Fat Tire has this kind of allure, mystique, or legend about it, you know, like people from the Midwest, you know, they couldn't get Fat Tire 10 years ago, so they would, you know, bring it back with them from vacation and stuff like that. And now it's actually growing, and you can get it in the Midwest. Now it seems to be expanding, you know, to the East Coast. It kind of has that same mystique about it. Let's talk about Fat Tire for a second. What's the, what's the secret recipe? What, what, what's going into that beer? Oh, man. Um, it's all about the yeast, you know? Really? I mean, with any beer, yeah. I think the yeast is basically the backbone of flavor of the beer. And, you know, it's, I guess every brewer kind of has its own secret about their yeast. But, uh, you know, each brewery uses a different yeast for their beer. So that's, that's probably the main secret. 
has the recipe changed? Has the yeast changed since you've been here? Uh, no, it's been the same. Uh, raw materials have been the same. So, I mean, I think that's one of the best things about Fat Tire is uh, consistency. Was there something unique about Fat Tire? I mean, is there a reason why that beer caught on and some others didn't? Um, you know, I think uh, it goes back to uh, just the drinkability and versatility of the beer. You know, it's um, not heavy, doesn't have a heavy body to it. It's not highly alcoholic. It has a lot of flavor. So it's just a good, uh, almost like a gateway beer, you know, to people getting into craft brewing and just try a fat tire. You know, it's nice, easy drinking. Uh, not one flavor is going to overpower you or overcome you. It's nice, uh, just a well balanced beer. Uh, I think that's why, you know, it's been so successful. And why do you think it was able to kind of turn people on to craft brews? It was just so, it was so accessible? Uh, that, yeah. Um, I also think maybe the brand has a little bit to do with that, too. I mean, uh, just the whole fat tire concept with uh, Jeff Liebisch going to Belgium and, uh, you know, riding a mountain bike and people over there seeing him riding around drinking beers and we're like, oh, that bike has fat tires. And that whole name and concept, I think, has... Uh, you know, a lot to do with uh, our success of selling the beer as well. Are you surprised how much success you've had? I mean, when you came here in 2005, did you think you'd be where you are today? Oh, no. I mean, every year, uh, it seems like something new surprises me, like how, you know, whether a release of a beer like Ranger or Skinny Dip a couple of years ago, I mean, just the success and how much beer we've been selling, I mean, it's it just, it's mind-blowing. I mean, I... There's nothing uh, I don't think we can't can't do. I guess you know. Or well, that doesn't make that. sense. Do you, do you ever? <laughs> I mean, do you ever come in and see like the order sheet and like how we were going to make this much beer? Uh, yeah, sometimes with uh, how we forecast our demand, you know, it'll be kind of weird because we'll have to make more beer than we can physically produce. But uh, you know, somehow, I guess it all works out. So uh, we're asking a lot of folks this, but. Uh, you know, why Colorado? You know, there, there is craft brewing all over the country. You know, here's Harpoon, and there's, you know, Sierra Nevada and sure. on the West Coast. But it really seems like at this exact moment in time, Colorado really seems to be like the mecca of, of craft brewing. What, why Colorado? Why here? Um, I don't know. It seems like it's always been that way from the beginning of, of craft brewing. I mean, maybe, one, you have good water, so that's pretty important from a brewer's standpoint that, you know, to make good beer, you need to have good water. Uh, there's a lot of sun here in Colorado. I don't know, a lot of people just like it. It's a nice place to live. Um, and then, then it also seems like, you know, from the get-go, craft brewing was almost born here. I mean, you have uh, every year the Great American Beer Festival down in Denver is there every year. Um, the Brewers Association now is based out of Boulder, so they have a big influence in the craft brewing industry. Um, then you you know going along to BA like I always remember like Charlie Papazian his boy the book the new complete joy of home brewing you know that always was based in Colorado and for some reason you know like all these beer geeks always flock to Colorado and I you know I can't put one, one thing on it but it just always seems to have been that way you know. Um, what do, what do you think is the other question we're asking a lot of folks? Give me your vision of the future of craft brewing. I mean, where, where are we going to be 10 years from now in the craft brewing? Are you guys going to double in size again, or is it, is it a fad? Is, what do you think? No, the craft brewing is definitely not a fad. I mean, um, over the past 20 years, the amount the craft brewing has grown has it's been immense. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of obstacles, I think, in the way of craft brewing. And one of them, I think, is educating the public about, you know, beer. And, you know, there's... A lot of good things about you know trying different types of beer and beer is definitely not a bad thing you know and beer's good I don't know <laughs> <laughs> profound final thought um, but I mean, you said something you know beer geek flock to Colorado is is it, is it becoming kind of cooler to be a beer geek um, I don't know I guess it depends who you ask you know um, for me beer. Uh, you know, I don't think, it, you know, it, it's a hobby for some people, but, like, I don't know, I just think it's a way of life, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the cool things that could change culturally is making beer just a part of life, you know, and it's, it's what you do, you know. It's what I do is make beer, so.